Who watches the Watchers? Mistakenly believing Captain Picard to be a god, the members of a primitive culture seize Troy and prepare to sacrifice her to him. Okay, the first thing I thought when I read that was good. I can see why people like season three. <laughs> <laughs> The Enterprise heads to Mintaka 3, where anthropologists are studying a proto-Vulcan race. Before the Enterprise arrives, their generator explodes and disables their concealment. And all these lightning flashes that keep happening are so distracting and so weird looking. Two of the natives, Liko and Oji, discovered the station and personnel since the hologram projector is broken. Which means the Prime Directive has been violated. Oops. Liko is played by Ray Wise who I knew from Twin Peaks, among a ton of other TV stuff. He's also in the Swamp Thing movie and Robocop. OG is played by Pamela Adlon, who has done a lot of voiceover work, notably Bobby in King of the Hill. That was the single most important thing! Their dialogue throughout the entire episode is pretty bad, but especially when they first show up. I didn't have too much of a problem with it. I thought it was over the top. When they fix the projector, OG touches the solid rock face, which I thought was not possible for projections to have actual material substance outside of a holodeck, but if you can do that, then someone should go talk to Moriarty. We're not going to get into the questions about how holographic technology works. Our entire channel's focus has changed. <laughs> <laughs> so Rewise spies on them and accidentally gets electrocuted. OG sees Beverly disappear with her dad when she beams him up to the Enterprise to take him to sickbay. Picard is annoyed that Beverly brought him up and starts throwing Prime Directive stuff at her, which we've already seen is meaningless, but whatever. He gets really pissed. Picard tells Beverly to wipe Liko's memory, referencing Dr. Pulaski's earlier efforts, but they don't even sedate him or anything, so he's watching everything happen around him. Yeah, they even say that they don't know if it'll work on his species. And then of course because we know Beverly's level of actual medical skills, it doesn't work. And when he's back down, he immediately starts talking about his experiences on the Enterprise. Yeah, they don't even keep an eye on him or anything. Meanwhile, one of the anthropologists, Palmer, is still missing. The crew has to find him, but... Further contamination must be prevented. Yeah, okay, whatever. At one point, Beverly says... He'd already seen us, the damage was done. It was either bring him aboard or let him die. And why didn't you let him die? That totally conflicts with the entire episode of Pen Pals. You cannot survive in this. Two to beam up. We cannot turn our backs. That was one of my big problems with this episode, is how much it contradicts things that have already happened. This is the first time we see the crew altering their physical appearance to fit into an existing culture. Riker and Troy are sent down to gather information about Palmer. And of course, Riker's first questions are about their mating rituals. If you want his services, I'm the one you have to negotiate with. What kind of services? All kinds. <laughs> I like how they went to an actual location instead of the lame set that they've used in the past multiple times. Yeah, they're at Vasquez Rocks, which is used for the setting in a billion different TV shows, including the Gorn episode of the old Star Trek. When Riker and Troy find Liko talking to the other Mintakins, it turns out that he interpreted the people on the Enterprise as the gods of their old legends, and they think Picard is someone that they refer to as the Overseer. Troy uses her finely honed expertise in psychology in an attempt to thwart Liko's claims, and I've gotta say, she really shows her finely honed skills. You had a very interesting dream. <laughs> And then the situation gets worse because the Mentakins have found Palmer. And because they use more logic than the people on the Enterprise. The Mentakins jump to conclusions when they assume that Picard is going to grant them their wishes if they do what he wants. While Liko and the others are debating things about the Overseer, Troy stages a diversion and calls most of them away. Riker's left behind with this guy guarding Palmer. Not wanting Troy to get all the credit, Riker gets a chance to use his expertise too, in this case his bondage skills. <laughs> And eventually, Riker manages to get Palmer alone, but for some reason thinks he has to get him halfway across the entire planet to transport, and it builds all this tension for no reason. Literally, all he has to do is get him behind a wall. Riker finally hides behind a rock and gets beamed up. To atone for Riker taking Palmer, the Mentakins decide to make a sacrifice of Troy. Finally. <laughs> 
So Picard determines the best way to minimize the violations of the Prime Directive is to beam up one of the Metakins and reveal everything about the Enterprise so she can go back and share it with everybody else. Hmm. <laughs> and while the Metakin is up on the Enterprise, Picard acts all godlike, which does not help. He could take her into her room with the other crew members, Geordi talking about his sex jokes, Riker stepping over chairs, Beverly letting people die due to being a shitty doctor. That would convey the message in about five seconds. <laughs> I do really like the scene when Picard is first explaining things to her, but then when she asks him to bring dead people back to life, it becomes two simpletons talking to each other. Lico doesn't believe that Picard is not the overseer, so he tries to prove it by shooting Picard. I honestly thought something was going to happen. He was going to figure some way around it, but he really is as dumb as he acts. And why is no one else on the Enterprise in communication with Picard during any of this? Nobody seems to know what he's doing. We cut from Picard on the ground with an arrow sticking out of him to a captain's log just saying he's okay. I thought it was a mistake to just dissolve away the tension just like nothing. And when he said, Dr. Crusher has repaired my injury with a usual skill. The next scene, I expected him to be walking around missing his arm or something. <laughs> Picard finally gets through to the Mentakins, and they leave. Who watches The Watchers overall? The conflict is a genuinely interesting one. I like the idea of people thinking the Enterprise crew are gods, but it's another example of good ideas and bad execution. Other than the one scene with Picard and the female Mentakin, all of the dialogue made me feel like I was reading a Silver Age DC comic. It was completely without nuance and very ill-fit for the potential depth of the conflict. This could have been a great episode. I would give it a C. I agree with the C. The writers can't really seem to get around the Prime Directive issue and write themselves into corners too much of the time. They end up relying on emotional resolutions instead of logical ones. Ray Wise does a good job of playing himself. <laughs> <laughs> but he is the only Mintakin to feel the way that he does. Unlike the Ensigns of Command, where Goshevin at least had others on his side, pretty much all of Picard's choices didn't make sense. But it's not as bad as some of the other ones. So it just gets middle of the road C.